What's up? Welcome to Philippine History 101. Our first topic is all about early times in the Philippines. Alam nyo ba na ang unang dumating sa Pilipinas ay mga negritos? About 25,000 years ago na rin ang nakakaraan. Sumunod dito ang mga Indonesians na 3,000 BC na rin ang nakakaraan. Then Malays na 200 BC na rin ang nakakaraan. In later centuries, sumunod ang mga Chinese. Alam nyo ba na most of today's Filipinos have grown dahil sa intermarriages between indigenous and Malay people. Modern Filipino culture, including language and cuisine, ay influensya ng Malay people. Nasyadong nag-introduce ng arts literature at saka system of government. Follow me, hit heart, for part 2. This is your teacher, Chair Maher. It's all about early times in the Philippines. Alam nyo ba na ang unang dumating sa Pilipinas ay mga negritos? About 25,000 years ago na rin ang nakakaraan. Sumunod dito ang mga Indonesians na 3,000 BC na rin ang nakakaraan. Then Malays na 200 BC na rin ang nakakaraan. In later centuries, sumunod ang mga Chinese. Alam nyo ba na most of today's Filipinos have grown dahil sa intermarriages between indigenous and Malay people. Modern Filipino culture, including language and cuisine, ay influensya ng Malay people. Nasyadong nag-introduce ng arts literature at saka system of government. Follow me, hit heart, for part 2. This is your teacher, Chair Maher. What's up? Let's continue the discussion and here are some facts. On 1521, dumating si Ferdinand Magellan a Portuguese explorer who was serving the Spanish crown and landed in Samar Island on his voyage para ikutin ang mundo. And explore niya ang mga islands and named it Archipelago of San Lazaro. Then Magellan was killed during a rebellion led by a dato named Lapu-Lapu. Lapu-Lapu is from Mactan Island. This is adjacent to Cebu Island. After nito, Patuloy pa rin sa pagsentang expeditions ang bansang Espanya for financial gain sa ating mga isla. And on the fourth expedition, pinangalanan ni Commander Roy Lopez de Villalubos ang ating mga isla na Philippines after Prince Philip, later King Philip II. Maraming salamat pala sa mga nag-follow. Please click heart and follow me for more updates. This is Chair Maher. What's up? Welcome to part 4 of our discussion. Let's continue. In 1565, King Philip II appointed Miguel Lopez de Legazpi as the first Governor General of the Philippines. Alam nyo rin ba na pinili ni Legazpi ang Manila bilang capital because of its natural harbor? Legacy din ng bansang Espanya na maging katoliko ang relihiyon ng mga Filipino and the creation of privileged landed class because of abuses and suppression of the Spaniards. A propaganda movement emerged with the aims for equality between Filipinos and Spaniards. At ang pag-aresto sa isang propagandista si Dr. Jose Rizal at execution niya taong 1896 gave fresh momentum to Filipino rebels to fight against Spain. And the secret society of Katipunan founded by Andres Bonifacio attacked the Spanish garrison in San Juan with little success. Thank you. Please click hard and follow me for more updates. Salamat pala sa mga nag-follow. And this is your teacher, Chirma. What's up? Let's continue the discussion. In 1565, King Philip II appointed Miguel Lopez de Legazpi as the first Governor General of the Philippines. Legazpi chose Manila to be its capital because of its natural harbor. Ang ilan sa mga legasiya ng bansang Espanya ay ang conversion ng mga Filipino into Catholicism and the creation of the privileged landed class. Because of the abuses and suppression of the Spaniards, a propaganda movement emerged with the aims of equality between Filipinos and Spaniards. At ang pag-aresto sa isang propagandista si Dr. Serizal at execution niya taong 1896 gave fresh momentum to Filipino rebels to fight against Spain. And the secret society of Katipunan founded by Andres Bonifacio attacked the Spanish garrison in San Juan. So ito na nga, habang ang mga Katipuneros in Cavite province headed by Emilio Aguinaldo defeated the Guardia Civil in Cavite. Because of Aguinaldo's victories, led him to be elected as president of the Katipunan. So nagkaroon ng dalawang grupo between Bonifacio and Aguinaldo and this led to the execution and trial of Bonifacio 
through the orders of Aguinaldo. Then, Aguinaldo later drafted a constitution and established the Republic of Biacnabato in Bulacan Province. In 1897, nagkaroon ng disagreement between Spanish government and Aguinaldo. Sumunod dito ang mga negosasyon between the two groups and later Aguinaldo accepted the amnesty. Aside from amnestia, may 800,000 US dollars pa in exchange for his exile in Hong Kong with his government. Thank you pala sa nag-follow. Sa mga hindi nag-follow, follow me. Wait for part 6. What's up? Let's proceed to the next topic. Our next topic is Philippine history during the American era. Alam nyo ba na nag-start ang war between Spanish and Americans sa Cuba? which changed the history of the Philippines. On May 1, 1898, the Americans, led by the U.S. Navy Admiral George Dewey, in participation of Emilio Aguinaldo, attacked the Spanish Navy in Manila Bay. At dahil natalo ang bansang Espanya, ginib up ng Espanya ang Pilipinas sa Amerika. And that's 1898 after a payment of 20 million U.S. dollars to Spain in accordance with Treaty of Paris ending the Spanish-American War. Then, on June 12, 1898, Filipinos, led by Emilio Aguinaldo, declared independence. So follow me guys para marami kayong matutunan because knowledge is power. So click hard and follow me. I will continue the discussion in Part 7. What's up? Welcome to the Part 7 of the discussion. So ang deklarasyon ng independence ay inopose ng bansang US who had plans of taking over the colony. And this led to a guerrilla war against Americans. In 1901, Aguinaldo was captured and declared allegiance to the United States. Sa parehong taon, si William Howard Taft ay inappoint as the first US governor of the Philippines. Then the US passed the Jones Law in 1916. Establishing an elected Filipino legislature with House of Representatives and Senate. Taong 1934 naman pinasa ang Tidings McDuffie Act by the U.S. Congress. Established the Commonwealth of the Philippines and promised Philippine independence by 1946. And that's it for part 7. Don't forget to follow me guys. Again, knowledge is... What's up? Thank you pala sa mga nag-follow. And now let's continue the part 8 discussion. Sa pagpapatuloy, on May 14, 1935 elections, ay nanalo si Manuel L. Quezon bilang presidente ng Commonwealth. And this is a fact. In accordance with the Tidings McDuffie Act of 1934, the Philippines was given an independence on July 4, 1946. And the Republic of the Philippines was born. Yes. And now, let's proceed to another topic and that is the Philippine history during the Japanese occupation. On December 8, 1941, ininvade ng Japanese ang Pilipinas. This is hours after bombing Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. While the forces of General Douglas MacArthur retreated to Bataan, the Commonwealth government of President Quezon moved to Corridor Island. Dito dineclare ang Manila City na open city para ma-prevent ang destruction. Thank you! Follow me guys! Bye!